All right, uh, welcome back to Data Blitz. Um, I'm going to try to do my dynasty and redraft sells and buys today. Um, yesterday was a little bit rough, you know, but you, you kind of keep chugging along. I kind of put my content out everywhere. I didn't know where I was going to put it or what I was going to do, um, but decided that podcast formats probably best for now i actually originally intended on doing you know, youtube or a world longer form even than that um but i just kind of wanted to get started we'll figure it out as we go uh so give me follow on twitter or x i haven't used twitter a long time but at, at dynasty blitz underscore xyz um we get started here um try to hit that, that like button or whatever even know what all the podcast things have. I know there's probably a bell and follow of some kind on all of them. We'll figure that out as we go. Uh, so week four, sells and buys. I'm going to both be covering a redraft perspective and a dynasty perspective here. Um, and I think I want to get started by talking about redraft so that we kind of split the episode into two parts here. Um. A lot of the guys are going to overlap, and I'll kind of mention that. So we'll see how this this kind of plays out. But we're going to go redraft buys to start. Um, our number one redraft buy this week is going to be Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore has seven targets in week one, nine targets in week two, and nine targets in week three. We also had Deshaun Watson look a lot better last week. And... I had to start to impress a little bit. Um, he definitely relied on Mari Cooper more than Elijah Moore. But Elijah Moore, similar to a Zay Jones situation, or Zay Flowers, sorry, um, situation, had a lot of designed runs even, but also designed passes, short passes. Um, and he should hopefully continue to get more of that going forward. Um, I love Elijah Moore both in Dynasty and Redraft. I think Elijah Moore might top out as a high-end wide receiver two, maybe even high-end wide receiver three this year, and project him to finish the season around wide receiver 28 if he does continue to get, you know, eight, nine targets a game. It's, it's pretty hard to not see that um, being the outcome. Um, I actually have Elijah Moore in all four of my Dynasty leagues that I'm in. Right now, uh, I just got the last share last week, and I had to trade away Keenan Allen to do it, but it's definitely worth it for me at the time because I am in rebuilding mode there. Our second redraft buy this week is going to be Joshua Palmer. Uh, Josh Palmer, as we talked about yesterday in the waiver wire pickup section of the week, um, is going to see a lot of volume in the upcoming weeks. Josh Palmer, so far this season, has run around on 68% of Justin Herbert's dropbacks. Josh Palmer has a, a substantial amount of targets, um, and he played every single passing snap after Mike Williams went out, as I mentioned yesterday. Um, I think Josh Palmer is in a good situation. If that offense continues to stay, you know, very consistent in the passing game, uh, and with with Justin Herbert, it should. But you never know with Brandon Staley. Um, Josh Palmer could be, again, a wide receiver, too. Um, and I think he's one of those guys that you could trade for him in redraft. I'm not sure what you'd be even giving up. Like, you could be giving up someone like Romeo Dobbs. Sorry. Not the best podcasting moment there. You give Romeo Dobbs for Josh Palmer with with Christian Watson coming back. You could see some sustained value out of that. And I think that's something to keep an eye on going forward. Um, so try to go by Josh Palmer this week. My last redraft by this week. I noticed when making my notes for this that I am a little bit more slanted towards buys than sells in, in a lot of places. But my last redraft buy for this week is John Dotson. 
Jahan Dotson is not really in the best situation right now. He's Terry McLaurin in front of him. He's had seven targets in week one, five, and then four, so his targets are going down. And Sam Howell is on pace to take 108 sacks. Jahan Dotson is a good receiver, though. Last year, he put up touchdown after touchdown when he was actually healthy. Um, and that was with Taylor Heineke. I, I don't see how Jahan Dotson's situation gets much worse right now. doesn't seem like he's getting schemed for that much. And it doesn't really seem like Sam Howell is going to be consistent at quarterback, like I discussed yesterday when talking about Jacoby Brissett as one of those potential waiver wire ads. Sam Howell, questionable right now, and we'll see how that, that works out going forward. You know, I said that was going to be that last one. I want to throw in one more guy, a little bonus guy, Christian Watson. We just talked about Christian Watson when I was talking about Romeo Dobbs. Christian Watson is awesome. Christian Watson is going to be very consistently good this year uh, when he's back from that hamstring injury. Hopefully it doesn't linger. That would be the one concern that I had is, you know, if, if that lasted for about two weeks or something after he came back because he has taken a long time to get going here. I don't think he played on Sunday because I think he was in a situation where he was trying to rest up for the division game, um, which is Thursday, so tomorrow. Um. Christian Watson is, is just very electric when he's on the field. Uh, he had that split last year where he put up tons of touchdowns, tons of yards. Um, and I think we could see something not exactly the same as that, but, you know, something where we've seen Christian Watson be one of the go-to guys for Jordan Love, the deep ball guy, um, but also, you know, kind of the consistent possession receiver that we might need. On the Packers, um, I have a Packers fan, so... There's a little bit of bias there, but Christian Watson's awesome. Uh, go try to buy Christian Watson if you can. Uh, at this point, we can move over into the redraft cells. Um, so I have Raheem Mostert as number one here. I believe he's sitting at the running back one right now. And if you can get anywhere close to top 12 running back value from Raheem Mostert, I would take it and run. Um, you could pick up A-Chain alongside somebody else and then and i do sometimes get stuck in this dynasty um, mentality but but most are hasn't remained healthy uh he played 16 games two seasons ago i believe and most are is 31. to me most are in a chain have similar skill sets as speedsters and it, it does feel like if most goes down they might just be able to replace him with a chain and, and have that similar output what's difficult sometimes in a system like that or in a, in a situation where one guy goes down and then you try to replace the equal production with another guy is that you're looking at you know let's let's use an aaron jones aj dillon situation where they have completely different skill sets you kind of have to change around the way that you do things and, and one guy was you know more of a power runner the other guy's more of a loser runner um but these guys to me look very similar and I think that means that if Raheem Mostert is to go down which I think he's going to go down I think Raheem Mostert is going to get injured um AJ might really step in and, and be that guy so try to sell Raheem Mostert if you can uh the next guy this really hurts to say is Garrett Wilson Garrett Wilson is Really struggling this year. Um, you know, we all expected him to really take that next step with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, a little fun stat for you. Most PPR points that Garrett Wilson has ever scored with Zach Wilson is 16.3. So 16.3 would probably put him around mid tier wide receiver two. And Garrett Wilson is more of a name at this point than he is actually producing. That it's not fun to, to get into the situation where you have such a good guy, such a great wide receiver, um, 
that's just limited by his quarterback play and a lot of the time it is it is a talent over situation but this year this situation is not looking great and it's not looking like it's going to get better with the things the jets have said and our last redraft sell is Cortland Sutton. Uh, Jerry Judy is finally going to be off his snap count for this year. Uh, we've seen Marvin Mims be an incredible you know, deep threat receiver, and he's looked very impressive for what I thought he was coming in. Um, Cortland Sutton has burned me so many times over the years. If he hits this year, I have no problem admitting that I was wrong, but yeah. if I've learned one thing about fantasy football, it's if Cortland Sutton looks good, sell him. Um, you have Russell Wilson, who's honestly looked not impressive. Uh, one thing that you could say is a positive is that Denver sucks, so Denver is going to be constantly passing the ball because it will be in, they'll be coming from behind or trying to uh, every game, it seems like, after after last week. Um, and Jerry Judy and Marvin Mims are, are going to be those guys over Gordon Sutton. It's just kind of been, it seems like the only guy on that offense this year to throw the ball to, but yeah, I know that's not true. I know Marvin Mims has, has contributed. Jerry Judy look, did look good last week. Um, but I, I would say try to buy Judy uh, and sell Sutton. See if those are things you can do. Honestly, you don't have to buy Judy though. I would recommend staying away from Denver as much as you can. At least this year. So with that, that concludes kind of a redraft section for this video. Um, or podcast, I don't even know what this is now. Um, so now we can move on to Dynasty Buys. Dynasty Buys are going to be pretty similar to redraft buys for this week. Just guys I'm high on. Guys, I think their situation could improve, uh, whether it be this season and, the, and they acquire some more dynasty value or they're looking pretty bad at this, uh, right now and we, we're going to have a market correction. Um, Elijah Moore is first guy here. Elijah Moore is getting more volume, getting you know more consistency at quarterback, getting more uh, game plan for him. Elijah Moore is going to Increase in value throughout the year. I mean, we all thought Elijah Moore was good in the offseason. Elijah Moore was traded for a second round pick. And Elijah Moore is proving that the Browns like him and are using him. But for some reason, nobody's increasing his value. I get that he hasn't really put out the fantasy numbers, but those will come with the targets. Uh, I mentioned Jahan Dotson. Jahan Dotson's kind of in a slump right now. I believe that Jahan Dodson is kind of that guy when it comes to um, producing in the future. I, I think he's a good wide receiver. Um, Terry McLaurin is not going to stick around forever. He's older than we all think. I think he's like 27 right now. Um, and Jahan Dodson is is great, and hopefully they improve at the quarterback position there. I feel like the commanders in the post-Snyder era, are we just going to see them skyrocket and, and be a much better team which we kind of already have seen until they played the Bills. Uh, additionally, I have Jalen Waddle here, which is kind of a buy high, honestly. Jalen Waddle is the wide receiver seven right now in Dynasty on keep trade cut. Um, Tyreek has said that he's going to retire in 2025. Whenever his contract's up, I believe that is 2025. It could be 2026. Um, I mean, we've seen what this offense looks like. Um, Dolphins, and this might be an overreaction, but I think we have to value Jalen Waddle higher than the wide receiver seven if two is going to be consistently outputting, you know, a great offense. And we have the the game plan from Mike McDaniel that looks great. I mean, Jalen Waddle being forgotten about this week, week could be like an argument to use um, when when trying to acquire him. But I know he's he's very He's definitely valued as a wide receiver one. I think I would try to go buy Jalen Waddle 
with you know Garrett Wilson in a second or something like that for to a rebuilding team. And I know that's a high value, but I think they're, they're you have a good quarterback there in in Tua, and usually when there is that good quarterback, the the wide receiver one there is valued very highly. But that's a different story. Next up here um, for Dynasty buys, we have Bryce Young. Um, Bryce Young faced some tough defenses early on. I think Atlanta and New Orleans are tougher than they appear on paper. Um, especially Atlanta, they're coached very well. Um, and it looked like, you know, the, the Panthers receivers were getting open against Seattle. You could use the point of Andy Dalton looking better than Bryce Young in that offense as, as sort of a dig, but I think that it shows that the receivers weren't doing that much in the first two games. Bryce Young has not made that many horrible mistakes early on, um, which isn't you know the most optimistic thing to say. But Bryce Young will improve as as Carolina gets more weapons. I would wait a little bit. Um, and try to try to get him when he's at his bottom. But I'd say we we get a couple more games of you know this bad Bryce Young uh, before we start to see him make some good decisions going forward. Um, okay, on to Dynasty cells. These are going to be some hot takes. Uh, so Raheem Mostert, obviously, as I talked about before, he's going to get hurt. He's 31. He's, you know, he has a strong backup running back behind him. He's has a fast skill set, which doesn't age well. Let's say if you can get a second from Raheem Mostert, even if you are a contender, just take it and run. Um, you know, some some team will overvalue the immediate production that he's offering. But that production, I'm theorizing, will be gone by the playoffs. Um, so take Raheem Mostert, sell him for whatever you can, and, and run with that. I have Puka, Puka Nakua, I believe that's how you say his name, here as well. Um, 15 targets in the first game, 20 in the second game, and 7 targets in game 3. Um I, I think Puka was force fed in value. Um, Matt Stafford, we all know, has tended to do that throughout his career. And I, I think he will eventually, when Cup is back, just force feed Cup and sort of, you know, play Puka as that second fiddle. I'd say, well, Robert Woods, and Robert Woods was, uh, I don't know if he was wide receiver one or high end wide receiver two. He was on the Rams. Uh, I, just, I just don't think Matt Stafford's the same, you know, quarterback that he was. Um, I believe that Matt Stafford was quarterback back then. Might have been golf, but um, still stands. I think Matt Stafford is going to force feed Cup and, and kind of Puka's not going to get 15, 20 targets a game. It's just not going to happen. Um, I could see him getting six to eight for sure. But, you know, is he that guy? Is he worth first-round pick um, when he's going to be getting eight targets a game as a second fiddle to an aging quarterback or to an, an aging wide receiver with an aging quarterback? I, I don't think so. And the last guy here we have is uh, Zach Charbonnet. I believe that's how you say his name, too. I don't really know. Um, Charbonnet is... I'm Kenneth Walker. That's, that's the biggest take you got on Charbonnet. Uh, the situation is horrible. Uh, he's pretty talented, especially as a, as a pass catching running back. Um, but I just don't see room for him in this Seattle offense. And I think he's going to have one of those situations where you don't really get value out of him, meet like a like Tony Pollard. Like he'll, he'll look great at times, but. You're not going to have, except for you know, last season, I think, um, a real high-end fantasy-producing player until he goes to a new situation or Kenneth Walker goes down or 
you know, there's there's plenty of other situations where um, he could, but it, right now he's not. Um, Charbon is just not going to be producing on that offense. So that kind of sums up all the the buys and sells that I had for this week. Um, I did get a new mic. Um, I hope it was good. I'm still kind of figuring out how to take out background noise. I know that there was a, more than there should have been last episode, and and there might still be more than there should be right now. Um, but I'm hoping to get better, you know, one episode at a time here, and we can figure it out. Um, so again, don't like because I, I, maybe this will be on YouTube. I don't know. Um, but follow, um, subscribe, find me on Twitter, uh, datablitz underscore XYZ. And, um, thanks for listening. Have a good one.